talk about the z-axis. Um, anybody that got a K40 knows this bed sucks. Um, you know, you put uh, for cutting. You know, you're only going to be cutting uh, eighth of an inch only, anyway, mostly. Um, but if you're wanting to do engraving on cutting boards or um, anything else like that uh, with different thicknesses, um, with the focal length of the laser, you're not uh, you're not going to be able to do it uh, unless you've got an adjustable Z bed. Um, there's several videos out there. Um, let's uh, move this out of the way. And uh, where'd it go? There. That was one option. And I'll tell you right now, it sucks. Don't even think about it. It's, um, yeah, if you, <laughs> I mean, it works, you know. If you want to put your hand underneath, you, 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 you know, you can't get your hand underneath it. You can't... Uh, you can't do anything. Um, you know, even if you wanted to try and extend this bar out of your case, um, you'd have to cut a slot up and down um, because it's in the center, um, and the adjuster rises with uh, with it. So, um, and it's pretty rickety and uh, it's pretty small. Um, you know, there are bigger ones, but they start getting upwards of fifty bucks. Um, and, you know, for 50 bucks, you build something better than this anyway. So um, I tried. Um, I gave it a shot. I told you I'd show you your fa failures as well. You're going to have a laugh about this one. Um, this is what I tried. Um, I used a 3D printer, and I thought, okay, well, you know, I'm going to move the uh, adjustment um, to the bottom so it stays uh, stationary, and, uh, you know, it works, kind of, you know. Um, it was an uh, interesting project. It was fun. Uh, I was, you know, looking to have fun anyway. So, but this is, um, it's 3D printed. Um, it's nowhere near usable. Um, it's rickety, you know, it's here. Um, you know, too flexible here. Um, you know, the plastic is just, you know, you, there's just no way you can do it. So, um, you know, if anybody else thinks about trying to 3D print something, mm, definitely not out of uh, um, PETG. Um, it's not going to work. Um, I don't know. I really, uh, you might be able to reinforce this back here with some aluminum or, you know, make the whole thing out of aluminum. But if you're going to do that, there's a lot easier things to do. So um, this was, uh, it was interesting. It was fun. Um, you know, it's kind of... Uh, uh, time killer. Um, took three days to print all the parts for it. Um, there's a lot of little pieces in there and adjustments and, uh, uh, you know, un until you actually put it together and put some weight on it, you didn't, I didn't really notice that it was uh, going to fail, but it did. Um, I'll be taking the part and saving the, saving the parts. Um, I'll find something to do with them. And, uh, yeah, anyway, um, what we're going to do is we're going to basically take this uh, simple uh, 5 16 threaded rod. Um, you can pick it up at Home Depot. I think this rod was um, I don't know, about three bucks. I think three something, three four dollars, something like that. Um, we're only going to be using probably half of it. Um, because uh, without the bottom cut out of the, the K40, um, really your maximum height you can have for, for the threaded rod for each uh, end is going to be uh, about four inches. So um, the rod that, um, uh, I, this is going to be a manual one. Um, it'd be very easy to convert to um, a powered uh, Z cable, but um, I have zero interest in that. Um, it's just, uh, you can do it faster by hand. Um, and, you know, with, with maybe later when I cut out the bottom of the, of, of the K40 um, and, and mount it to the table and stuff like that, I might, I might uh, hook it up to uh, a stepper. Um, but for now, uh, we're just going to do this. And then this is, uh, 
three quarter inch aluminum. Um, I think this was about six dollars, something like that. Um, six or seven dollars. Um, but really, other than some screws and stuff, uh, the rest of the pieces are 3D printed. So it's a pretty cheap cable. Um, and uh, yeah, let's get to it. Um, I'll uh, show you the uh, parts that I designed. Um, I'll do a screen record of that and walk you through it. So we'll be right back with that. All right, welcome back. Um, this is how I uh, create the parts um, for the different mods that uh, I'm making. Um, Tinkercad. I have Fusion 3, 360 commercial version, but um, uh, it's, uh, I'm so busy trying to get this stuff going. Um, uh, the Fusion 360's uh, got a bit of a steep learning curve. I just haven't got around to doing it yet. So, um, but this works great. Um, for quick, easy stuff, um, you know, uh, I want to get into the 360 because of the constraints and stuff like that for boxes and, and different things like that. But um, anyway, this is one we're dealing with right now. Um, here's the uh, parts I designed. Uh, let me load in here. Um, so we've got the top brackets, um, three bottom brackets. The bottom bracket with the tensioner added to it um, and it was just uh, I added it to this so um, uh, the um, angle iron or uh, the aluminum angle um, didn't have to um, have the tension on it um, there was a video out there of a guy that built a bed that was similar like this and his main problem was uh, he he used a tensioner attached to the uh, angle iron um, and uh, uh, it was twisting on them, um, you know, and seeing that video, um, I decided to make it part of the, the part and it works great. Um, there's no, no issues a, at all. So um, here's your, your side pulleys, um, there's your handle, there's a little washers um, for this guy and I need one of those um, for the tensioner adjustment uh, to keep the nut off of it. Um, but that's that's it. That's that's how I designed the parts. Um, then I sent them over to the 3D printer. Um, I my I'm network network saved um, to my 3D printing machine, so I can save directly to that hard drive. Um, here's an if you want to see uh, an idea how long it takes to do stuff on a 3D printer. Um, these three top brackets, uh, five and a half hours. Uh, see here um, here's the bottom bracket with the tensioner um, slice that oh, come on all right we had a small problem with Jira the slicer um, needed to be restarted um, I hope that fixes it um, anyway you can see the um, bottom bracket with the tensioner it takes another five hours to print um, the uh, top brackets. Uh, hope, hopefully this will. No. There we go. There are another three hours. Uh, and then the pulleys. I think they're like another hour. I think. Yeah, another hour and a half. So as you can see, it, um, it actually does take quite a while. Um, never mind the design time to get everything right. Um, these pulleys, uh, it, what took the longest was getting the teeth to exactly match up on the belt. Um, so um, and there it is, it's exact. Um, so anyway, um, so that's how that's how the parts are designed. Um, I'll uh, next I'll uh, throw a quick little. Uh, segment and you can um, I'll speed it up drastically but uh, you can watch some parts print um, I'll be right back with that okay all right here's the uh, print of a top bra top bracket um, as you can see the 
3D printer, um, it builds things layer by layer. Um, and uh, it works pretty well. The um, total print time on this one um, was 49 minutes, I believe. Um, so you can see uh, uh, it does take quite a while um, to build parts. Um, Anyway, um, this is about a minute and a half long. Um, hope you enjoy it or skip forward. Okay, bye. back. Um, this is how I cut threaded rod. Um, put some nuts on it. Okay. Uh, pass the adhesive. There was a little adhesive on here, so from the sticker, when you buy it, there we go. Pick it past it and they'll spin. There we go. All right. So we're going to move it down. Um, the plans call for three, four inch pieces and a five and a quarter. Um, five and a quarter is for the part that sticks up that we put a knob on it so we can manually turn it. Okay, so we'll set our guide nut to 4 plus the curve of the blade, which I already know is a 16th. So we'll go to 4 and a 16th, right there. That's pretty good right there. Close enough, doesn't have to be dead on. And then we'll lock that down. down so it fits in the vise. Lock it down. Sorry for shaking. I got a camera attached to a tripod that's attached uh, to the bench. And then it's just a matter of using the washer, the nut as a guide. And I need to tighten that camera down. Hang on. Just go slow 
and always make sure you're, I, I can show you, but I have safety glasses on, so, because you're dealing with metal, uh, I generally don't do it when uh, I'm working with wood, but that's just me. There we go. Clamp it down and up. There. There. Done. All right. There's a four inch piece. Um, be careful of these edges. They're super sharp. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but that got me yesterday. And uh, it still stings like a bitch. Um, okay, now we're going to go measure it and figure out where we need to put the, uh, the hole in it for the um, uh, set screw um, to hold the bracket in place, or the, the pulley. Um, uh, I'll go get the pieces to measure it, and then we'll set up on the, um, dr the drill press and, and get a slight hole drilled in it. I'll be back shortly. All right, we're back. All right, I put one together with all the pieces in it. It'll let me know approximately where the test screw is. It's just got to be close. Um, you know, these uh, these are four inches. Um, you're, you'll never be able to raise your bed that high anyway um, because of the focal length of the laser. So it's just got to be close. Um, a little knot right there. And we're going right in between those two threads right there. And um, now I'm not recommending that anybody do it this way. Um, this is just the way I do it. Um, you know, it's uh, the drill could the drill bit could snap. Uh, you know, into yourself. Um, I don't have an auto center, so um, this will be fine. Um, should I told you? Yeah, I would uh, show you how I do things. Um, whether it's a smart way, probably not, but it works. Um, we're not trying to drill all the way through it. What we're trying to do is uh, put a little divot in it um, just for the set screw to sit in um, so that the, the pulley doesn't, yeah, that's not that. um, so the pulley doesn't uh, spin. Um, even though the pulley's threaded, it's still going to want to spin so well. And uh, that's it. Well, I hope you can see that. Yeah. We'll just make it stand up straight. There. And just go. I just go really, really slow. Um, so. I can I can feel it trying to shift the bolt and stuff, so I'm just moving it as it as it tries to shift away from it. But we're almost there anyway, so and I'm not putting hardly any pressure on it at all, just just barely letting it snug down. You can see the, the spine shavings just coming out really really slow. Let's see, and that's good enough. That's all we need. Light fell. I didn't want to stop, so let's see if I can get it in here. But there's uh, that's all we need. It's just enough for the set screw to get in there. All right, I'll uh, get back to the table and uh, we'll see you back there. All right, bye.